welcome back to lecture number 5 on numerical on gx type evaporator this is the fifth lecture of unit number 2 thermal design of refrigeration system components uh, previous lecture we have discussed different types of evaporators and also the thermal uh, design considerations of the evaporator so evaporator is a type of heat exchanger uh, so normally we use two approaches for analyzing the heat exchangers lmtd approach and ntu approach uh, generally these two approaches are used for certain situations uh, lmtd approach is used for uh, designing the new evaporator or new heat exchanger and uh, ntu method is generally adopted if one of uh, three temperatures are given and one of the temperature is unknown uh, and generally it is used to predict the performance of existing evaporator uh, existing heat exchanger so these two types of uh, we generally focus uh, this particular topic we focus on dx type evaporators or uh, designing of dx type evaporator uh, so we straight uh, uh, directly go to the problem statement uh, this is a basic design of direct expansion chiller uh, some of the design details of refrigeration 2220 tr dx chillers are as follows Uh, effective tube length is given diameter of the tubes inner side and outer side is also given number of refrigerant passes are given that is 8 uh, entering water temperature 11.1 degree celsius obviously it is entering to the shell not uh, to the because as it is a dx type evaporator uh, as per the configuration we have discussed uh, in dx type evaporator refrigerant flows through the tubes and uh, liquid or water in this case which is to be cooled flows to the shell so entering water temperature is 11.1 degree celsius leaving water temperature is 7.2 degree celsius refrigeration temperature at the inlet 2.2 degree celsius uh, obviously it is a evaporating temperature uh, because uh, the same uh, refrigeration temperature at the outlet is not given so we assume uh, the state is saturated at the outlet of the evaporator condensing temperature is given That is 43.3 degrees Celsius. Water side heat transport coefficient is given. That is 46.50, and uh, heat transport coefficient. That is outer side heat transport coefficient. HO is given, and HI is given. And find the number of tubes per pass. Uh, in this case, uh, it is we have to assume that uh, thickness and thermal resistance of the tube negligible. So conductive resistance uh, is negligible in this case. So this is a dx type shell and tube evaporator in this case uh, through tubes uh, refrigeration is flowing refrigeration enter refrigeration leaves and uh, if you see the configurations there are eight number of pass now this is for example only uh, so if number of pass now in one shell now in this case number of pass is one this is second this is third and this is fourth pass so like that there are four uh, additional passes so eight number of passes are there uh, so this temperatures don't consider this temperatures only for reference this diagram only you refer now this temperature is given tube inlet temperature that is a refrigeration temperature that is 2 degree celsius refrigeration out temperature is again 2 degree celsius because uh, outlet temperature is not given so we assume only as pure saturation case uh, then a uh, shell inlet temperature that is water temperature which is given as 11.1 degree celsius and shell outlet temperature that is living water temperature 7.2 degrees these temperatures are given inner side heat transfer coefficient is given so that is 230 and outer water side heat transfer coefficient is given that is 460 so this information is given so we have to calculate the number of tubes in one particular pass now it is only this is a generic diagram so that's only one tube is given but multiple tubes are possible in one particular pass so that we have to calculate now in this case all temperatures are given so inner tube temp uh, uh, both fluid temperatures are given inlet and outlet so obviously we have to go for lmtd approach so first uh, when from on the basis of problem statement first you decide the which approach to be used either lmtd or nd in this particular problem statement uh, as all temperatures are given so we go for lmtd approach so lmtd approach the basic equation is we can say 
a LMTD approach. So basic equation for LMTD approach is U A LMTD. So obviously there are, uh, as far as uh, uh, evaporator or condensers are concerned, generally there are three equations associated with uh, this. One that is in terms of area, this is the one equation. Second in terms of mass flow rate, that is also equal to if the cooling edge, that is if this is chill water, MCP delta T, that is that that equation can be used. And third equation that is in terms of in terms of enthalpy difference. So that is if the pH diagram is given from that uh, the evaporator capacities, m dot r into h1 minus h4. So this way, the three equations generally applicable as per the given statement. Uh, so uh, because u values indirectly given, h i h value given, a o value is also given. So LMTD approach or QL values are LMTD approach we can use. So QL uh, that is in terms of area u o that is. Uh, outer heat transfer coefficient. So if we are using here UO, obviously we have to use outer area. If we are using UI, then we have to use inner surface area. So this is heat transfer area, which is not a cross-sectional area of the tube and into LMTD. Now, as far as the LMTD, uh, because all temperatures are given, then and then we go for LMTD approach. So in this case, uh, the evaporating temperature is given two degrees Celsius. Water inlet temperature is 11.2 degrees Celsius. Water outlet temperature is 7.2 degrees Celsius. So this is theta 1, this is theta 2. LMTD is given by theta 1 minus theta 2 upon ln of theta 1 by theta 2. So all values known to us, we can obtain LMTD value. So one value we have obtained. QL value is also given. So first we are obtained because uh, there is no falling factor is given and no fins are the given. So generalized equation that is U and the area, area equation that is one upon U O A O that is equal to one upon H O A O that is equal to one upon H I A I. If you multiply both side by A O, then this equation arises. Now in this case also uh, the H I value, which is a function of Delta T. Delta T in this case, the temperature difference between uh, evaporating and cooling medium. So average of these two, that is TW. So this average TW average TW into TL. So this is evaporating temperature. So both are given. So we can calculate HI. Now average of this to 11.2 plus 7.2 divided by 2. So that average temperature and into this thing. So because it is a function of delta T, that's why it is we have to obtain delta T. Uh, then HO is uh, given in the statement. So and uh, for AO, AY, AO is pi DL, pi DOL, and AI is pi DIL. Uh, so IL is common, so get cancelled. So instead of AO by AI, we can put DO by DI. So DO is given 1.905 centimeter, and DI is given 1.704 centimeter. So by taking the ratio, we can calculate the, now only unknown in this equation is U. So we can calculate UO. Now we know the value of UO. We know the value of LMTD. We know the value of QL because it is 20 TR already given. We can calculate AO. So AO is also given by because this is outer heat transfer area. So total number of tubes into the surface area of one tube. That is pi DO into L. Now again in this case, uh, the effective tube length is given. That is 221.5 centimeter. Diameter is also given 1.905 centimeter. We have to convert into meter as well. And now AO we already obtained. So from this we can calculate the number of tubes in the shell. So there are 72 shells. Uh, 72 uh, tubes are present in the shell. Uh, but uh, we have to calculate the number of tubes per pass. So number of refrigerant passes are given, that is n number of passes. So if there are n number of passes, so number of tubes per pass we can obtain, that is number of tubes divided by number of passes. So that comes around nine. So there are nine tubes per pass. So this is a simple example. Uh, so even whichever may be an example related with evaporator or condenser, First thing you have to recognize the approach, whether 
LMTD approach or NTU approach. And then based on the statement, you have to decide that. And then you start the problem with the equation applicable. With the LMTD, then you begin with this particular equation. Okay. So this is simple example. It can be asked for eight to 10 marks in the examination. The second numerical we'll take uh, that is on uh, dehumidifying coil, that is DX coil. First, that is a DX chiller, uh, but it is used for producing chill water. Now, in this particular example, it is DX coil in a package air conditioning system has a supply volume flow rate is given. So DX type chiller is something like this. So this is a DX chiller where the air is being cooled. So this is air cooling. Generally, such type of uh, DX coil is fitted in the AHU, that is air handling unit. And air is made to flow over this particular coil. And when it comes in contact with the coil, it gets cooled as well as dehumidified. So this is an example of DX coil in a package air conditioning system as a supply volume flow rate. So volume flow rate of the air is given, that is 2.6 meter cube per second. Air enters, so suppose this is, we consider this is entry condition, this is exit condition on the other side. So air enters the coil at a DBT of 25 degrees Celsius and WBT of 19.4 degrees Celsius. So immediately we can locate that high point on the psychrometric chart because if the problem is based on DX coil, uh, then or air cooling. So obviously we required the psychrometric chart. So first of all, we locate uh, inlet point. This is inlet point, this is outlet point. So in order to locate a point, we require two quantities. Now two quantities are given. DBT 25 degrees Celsius, which is given. And uh, WBT 19 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, 90. So intersection of two lines gives you I point. So this is given. We have to calculate the total cooling capacity of this DX coil. We have to calculate cooling coil or capacity of the coil at full load and the condition of air leaving the coil. So condition of, uh, this is because the coil is available. So we have to obtain the cooling capacity as well as condition of the coil leaving the, this is the exit conditions we have to calculate. Uh, Using the following data, extended surface to inside tube surface area ratio is given. So as the fins are provided uh, here, so the area, <coughs> considering the fin area divided by inside heat transfer area. So that ratio is given, that is 80 by AI. That, that ratio is given, that is 16. Uh, boiling heat transfer for HCFC 22 inside the copper tubes. So inside the copper tips, uh, the boiling heat transfer coefficient is given. That is at 7 degrees Celsius. So 7.2 degrees Celsius is the evaporating temperature which is given. So 4000 inside heat transfer coefficient, HI value is given. Surface effectiveness for weight fins. So effectiveness of fin is given. That is 0.76. Heat transfer coefficient of the outer surface uh, of the coil. Uh, the corrugated fins are there. So outer surface heat transfer coefficient given. Inner side or outer side heat transfer coefficient is given. And the total outer surface area, that is so total 80, including total outer surface area, that is including fin area, we can say. So that uh, area is also given, that is 56 meters. Now in this case, uh, uh, two temperatures or inlet temperature is given and the evaporating temperature is given. So only outlet temperature of air is required. So obviously one temperature is unknown. So we cannot go for LMTD approach. We have to go for NTU approach. So as far as NTU approach is concerned, <coughs> so once we get I point, again, we obtain V1. So first of all, we calculate the mass flow rate through this particular coil. Uh, so in order to calculate mass flow rate, what we require, mass flow rate is volume flow rate divided by volume at one. So I in, this is volume, volume at one, that is volume at I. So volume flow rate, that is 2.6 meter cube per second. And the specific volume at one that we get from psychrometry chart. So that comes around 3.023 kg per second. So this is a mass flow rate through the cooling coil. Uh, then NTU approach we have to use because NTU approach, this equation is applicable. NTU that is equal to UT80 upon C minimum, that is lowest of 
capacity rate. That is uh, heat capacity. That is total heat capacity. That C minimum that is equal to MCP. So that is heat capacity. Uh, so um, this is the approach. From this we we have to calculate NTU from NTU effectiveness method that is called. It. Now in order to calculate NTU, what we require uh, overall heat transfer coefficient including fin, uh, because outer side there is fin. That's why the UT symbol is used, not UO, because UO is generally used uh, if the bare tubes are used. Here the fins are provided at the outer side, so that's why UT. It is also the total area which is given, that is 56 meters square, and C minimum, C minimum which is MA into CP. So first of all, we'll calculate C minimum. MA is given, or we already obtained. CPA is 1.005, so that comes around almost same C minimum, that is in kilowatt. Then we use the exp uh, in order to calculate UT. So 1 upon uh, UT80, that is equal to 1 upon HT80 E30, because uh, this is the outer side, including fin area. Uh, so outer side thermal resistance, total thermal resistance, 1 upon UA is total thermal resistance. That is equal to outer side thermal resistance. Uh, so outer side thermal resistance, fins are provided, and the fin effectiveness is also given. So we have to use this effectiveness in here. So HT80 plus HIAI. Now multiply both sides by 80. We get this expression. And instead of 80 by AI, we can put R. So because this R value is given, that is extended surface to inside surface area. It is directly given, so R is given. HI value is also given. So HI value is boiling heat transfer coefficient is 4000, which is given. HO value is given, that is 73. Eta is given that is fin effectiveness that is 0.76 so only unknown is ut so we can calculate ut now we know ut we know it is given and c minimum we have obtained we can calculate the ntu so ntu comes around this uh, then there are two expressions of ntu one for parallel flow one for counter flow uh, but uh, better is a counter flow arrangement or cross flow arrangement so this is the Effectiveness expression for evaporator. So you have to memorize that, that uh, from the heat transfer. You already studied uh, the effectiveness expressions for uh, mixed flow, parallel flow, uh, evaporator, uh, then parallel flow and counter flow. So evaporator this and condenser, this formula is available. So from this we can calculate because NTU already obtained. From this we can calculate effectiveness. Effectiveness, uh, the expression of effectiveness is nothing but actual temperature drop divided by maximum temperature drop. So actual temperature drop is uh, Ti minus Tio and maximum temperature drop that is Ti minus Tr or we can say Tl in this case. So this is maximum. So in this case only unknown is Tio, we can calculate Tio. So once we get this is outer heat transfer, uh, sorry, uh, outer outlet tem exit temperature of the coil. So the air enters at 25 degrees Celsius and it is cooled at 14.88 degrees Celsius. So this is dBT, uh, but we have to locate the point on psychrometry chart. So as per the given information, uh, the uh, 7.2, that is ADP of the coil is given, so we can locate ADP. Then we can join point I to ADP. So we get the process line. Now with the help of TO, TO is known to us. So if you draw a vertical line till it intersect uh, this process line, and the corresponding point is the exit point. So once we get the exit point from the psychrometry, we can extract the condition because condition is asked. That is one question. Uh, that is what should be the condition of the air leaving the coil. So condition cannot be expressed with the help of single quantity or single parameter. As far as air conditioning is concerned, it, it requires minimum two parameters. So from psychrometry, a uh, chart we get the value of this is dbt is already known to us we get the value of rh so that it the exit conditions are 14.88 degrees celsius and rh is 90 percent so this is exit condition <clears throat> then we have to calculate the cooling capacity so in order to calculate cooling capacity what we require the enthalpies enthalpy at i and enthalpy at o 
so here the i point is located this is o point is located so corresponding enthalpy 56 and 39 so these values we extract from psychrometry chart that is h r and h o so ql dot that is equal to mass flow rate of the air into h i minus h o so that comes out to be 51.39 kilo so in this way we have obtained the total cooling capacity of the dx coil as well as the exit condition so we have discussed two approaches one pr uh, problem we have solved by using lmtd approach and the second problem we have solved by using ntu approach uh, obviously you come to know when to use ntu approach when to use lmtd approach and that's it for this lecture so at the end of this particular lecture you should be able to determine the performance parameters or you should be able to analyze dx uh, chillers and dx type dehumidifying coil especially the chiller is uh, used for chilling but in both cases there is dx uh, indicates that intubate operation essentially it is intubate operation so both cases uh, uh, the evaporation is taking place inside the tube but only the outer media is different. In chiller case, outer medium is liquid or water. And in dehumidifying coil, the outer medium is essentially a air, so which is used in uh, air condition, direct air conditioning system. That is a direct expansion type air conditioning system. Uh, so such type of problems can be asked. So the simple numerical, so only in other type of new, we can solve the other numericals from the assignments. Only difference is that uh, you have to uh, use something is unknown, something is known. That's it. Otherwise, the rest of the things are same. Only you stick with the two approaches. So I again summarize how to so, uh, solve the problem of uh, uh, evaporator design. So first of all, from the statement, you recognize the approaches, LMTD approach or NTU approach. If all temperatures are given, go for LMTD approach. If uh, two temperatures are given or three temperatures are given one is temperature is unknown then go for NTU method lmtd approach is generally used for designing of evaporator or designing of heat exchanger and ntu method is used uh, to predict the performance of existing heat exchangers okay, so these are the two approaches generally uh, you have to adopt uh, so basic equations associated with uh, this thing you can even note down these equations that is the, there are three equations associated with evaporator the first equation that is in terms of area that is ql is equal to u a lmtd this equation is used for lmtd approach second expression that is ntu that is ntu that is equal to u a divided by c minimum c minimum is obviously the cooling medium side because evaporator side the C, minimum, uh, C value is infinity, so that is maximum. So this approach for NTU. Then uh, uh, effectiveness expression, that is effectiveness that is equal to one minus E raised to minus NTU. So these two equations used for NTU approach. And in addition to this, the common expressions required is MCP delta T. That is in dehumidifying coil, we cannot use MCP delta T because there is a dehumidification takes place. But in uh, chiller side, you can use uh, the mass flow rate of water into CP of water into temperature difference of cooling water. That equ equation we can use. That equation also we can use if uh, the relevant information is given. And the third information that is uh, the formula of QL that is from the pH chart. So QL is equal to mass flow rate of refrigerant into H1 minus H4. So these are the expressions only applicable. I have not written here, but uh, where I am, uh, whatever the dictations, you can note down this expression on the notebook. And while solving the numerical part, you refer these e equations. Uh, so that's it for this particular lecture. Next lecture, we study condensers, uh, the different types of condensers, followed by the numerical part of the condenser. I think numerical part of condenser is similar to the numerical part of evaporator, except the instead of evaporating temperature, we consider the condensing temperature. Thank you very much.